This is a Spree Model Network TV and you're watching How To Jetty Programming. Today I'm joined with James who's going to go ahead and show us a little bit more on how to program your Jetty Duplex 2.4 transmitter. Hey guys, James with Esprit Model Jetty USA. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about setting timers on your DSDC series radios. Um, a lot of guys have questions on how that's done and all the different ways you can do it. I'm not going to show you everything, but I will give you an idea how to set up your first timers. You'll have to do a little experimenting and see what else you can come up with. Uh, first thing you want to do is go to the main menu, go down to where's Mark Timers and Sensors. Uh, click that and go straight into timers. You'll see the model I'm working on has no timers added. So you'll click add. We're going to go ahead and name the timer and we'll name this one number one. And just make it easy to go back through. Uh, you can set an initial value or a target value. It's going to depend on whether you're counting up or counting down time. Um, in this case, we'll go ahead and set a target value. We'll count up to a time. Basically, you will click the center button that moves the cursor over. You want to go ahead into the last position uh, to add what you want to add. We'll go ahead and add a 10 second timer just to make things fun. Timer type is going to be a standard timer. Uh, we have standard timer and then we have a free running timer. So if you were doing an overall flight time or an overall run time, you set a free running timer. If you were trying to set a countdown timer for battery or fuel uh, or something similar, you would set a standard timer. Uh, in this case, we'll go back to standard. Our report type, we're going to go ahead and use voice. And we're going to go ahead and set a switch on this type on this timer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a two position switch, which is SF for what we're doing here. And reset switch, we're going to leave blank. We're going to reset it on the main screen. Reset type won't, uh, won't be affected. And flight mode's active. We'll go ahead and set that on active in all flight modes. So if we go back to our main menu, turn our volume up on our transmitter, um, go ahead and set our timer. Oh, it looks like I've overlapped some switches. So be careful doing that really quick. If you do the same thing, go into timers go into that timer you created, clear that switch out, and just select a different switch. Now if we go out and go ahead and flip our switch, it starts our running timer. Seven, six, and you can hear our voice five, counting down our four, timer to 10 three, seconds. Two, with one. you playing a game of flying with yourself or trying to launch or land in a specific window, it's fun to set that timer on approach and use that to nail it in. For you ALS guys, you spot landing guys, it's really fun to do. Um, another thing that you can do is you can set in a helicopter, you can set a timer for your auto or for your for your throttle hold or auto recovery. Uh, so if you pull into throttle hold and try to do an auto and, and feeling uncomfortable, most ESCs will give you a certain window to flip back into. Uh, standard mode, fast spool up and recover. Um, one of the things I like to do is set timers. To me, the ESCs I run have a 10 second auto bailout. So if I'm flying and I hit my throttle hold, Nine, it starts counting eight, it down for me from seven, that 10 seconds. Six, so that gives me five, a good idea four, of how long three, I have. Uh, oh, let me go ahead and flip out of idle. It stops there. Flip out of hold, stops the timer, and keeps running. Um, a lot of different ways to set up timers. You can set up timers based on any of the functionality. Some of my airplanes I like to set my timer with a throttle start above 25%. Some of the timers I like to set up on switches. I've used the accelerometers to start the time. All of that is done through the timers and sensors menu and in the timers. You can add as many timers as your radio will allow depending on whether you have a 16 or a 14. Uh, if you've got the 14, you have a limited number of timers unless you add more. Uh, 16, both DC and DS, you have a, a, a ton of timers available for you. So go ahead and use those. If you have any questions of those, like always, feel free to reach out to us at espreemodel.com or Jetty USA. Uh, another thing I want to show you today is 
how to set alarms. And you can set alarms based on capacities or based on uh, telemetry items. Um, what we've got set up in the radio here are voltage for a receiver and our battery capacity. And this is based on a, on a model that I'm using, which is my Dune helicopter. Uh, if you want to add alarms, you simply click Add at the bottom of the screen. You decide which sensor you're trying to look at. So let's say we want to go ahead and look at Beck voltage on that particular helicopter. You change that to Enabled. You set a condition. Uh, so let's say voltage at less than, set it for 5 volts. You can set a voice to that file uh, by choosing one of the preloaded files in the radio. And of course, you can always use a text to wave generator to create your own files like I've done in a lot of situations. But what we can do is go into the preloaded and, and there's a low Beck file. Warning, low voltage max spec. And there you go. And so that'll set that alarm if my BEC voltage drops below 5 volts, which I run 8.4 on this particular back, so I'd want to set that alarm a little higher. You can set an activation switch, so you can turn that on, uh, alarms on and off um, or turn them on. I don't like to set them on a switch. I like to set it into the system and let it run. Uh, that way they're always monitoring your system. Uh, but that's the basic setup for alarms. Again, like like before you have any questions, reach out to me at Esprit Model or JettyUSA.com. Uh, and thanks for joining us. Have a good day.